Hey guys, Jason here. So, I was going to talk about my uh, Sun Grid Tie Inverters. Now this one here I picked up and I gave it a shake like I always do. And it had a little bit of a rattle inside. <laughs> and what it was, was the... Uh, on the back side here, uh, of these fan bolts, they got little nuts. And one of the nuts was loose and rattling around inside there. So that's why I always say, um, you know, give your grid tie a good shake before you even hook it up. Make sure nothing's loose in there. Make sure you, because, you know, all it would take is like that little nut off of the back of the fan. Slide underneath this circuit board in there. And uh, it could short it out. So anyway, here's the inside of the uh, Sun 600 watt. 22 to 60 volt grid tag. Now these capacitors in here, I had one of them on my 10.8 up there burn out because I uh, over voltage it. But these ones here go all the way up to uh, it says 63 volt. So uh, so it can actually handle it. An input of 63 volts maximum which you don't ever want to get close to the maximum on these now um, let's see here you'll see okay um, how they're designed is like uh, these side pieces are aluminum and this side piece here is aluminum but then it's got a steel plate that runs between here and over there it slides in a track underneath of the uh, circuit board and everything so it slides in a track there so it's got a steel plate there that gives it some more weight to it but as you see most of it is just empty space in here um, the fan actually blows air in from the uh, DC side inputs so um, no I mean it sucks the air out I mean <laughs> and uh, I found that out uh, so that means that all of my these ones up here the 10.8 to 30 volts that are hooked up to my grid or my uh, wind turbines all those are mounted upside down I have to flip them over <laughs> or I could just come inside here and flip the fan over so instead of sucking the air out it just blows the air in and goes out the vent hole up above but it doesn't matter because uh, when you're running um, at least for me my wind turbines the incoming power is never um, stable enough uh, for the, uh, the fan to come on I mean it'll go up to like 600 or 500 watts incoming power or whatever and then the wind dry or drops again and then it'll so the these are made for solar so these things when the wind dies down because it's not a consistent uh, input they think that the solar or the sun's going down on the solar panels and they don't need to kick on the fan uh, so it's a built-in uh, thing that they have that makes it so that when you're using them for wind power the fans never seem to kick on not for me anyway but for when you have them hooked up to solar they do kick on when they get about 400 watts the fans kick on and those guys are mounted the right way the fan sucks the air right out on the DC side now these things they don't seem uh, to get very hot for me anyway so far um, um, I I don't know if it uh, well because for one thing I'm running 600 watt grid tie inverters and I only have 480 watts going into each or 480 watts maximum there are two 235 watt panels or 202 230 watt panels those two are 230 watt panels and the ones I just ordered it's supposed to show up tomorrow are 235 watt panels but they're the same size so <laughs> anyway so anyway um, 
that's 460 watts right there and I have that going into one 600 watt 22 to 60 volt grid tie right over there and then I have another one wired up uh, for another panel another set of two panels I mean and then so I'm running them at I'm not running them at full capacity I always <clears throat> I like to run them under what their maximum capacity is because even though it says 600 watts on this thing that's maximum that this thing can handle that's surge um, it'll go above that a little bit because the uh, capacitors say they they go up like these ones say uh, what did it say 62 volts or something like that I think yeah 63 volts this one says 63 volts maximum on these capacitors so the ones inside uh, the 10.8 the 30 volt grid ties say 35 volt maximum so on their capacitors but even that it's like I w still want to run it a lot lower than uh, what it's rated at um, like this one here is rated at you can't see it but it's it's normal uh, where is it normal AC output power is 540 watts so it's actually a 540 watt grid tie it's 600 watt maximum so it's best to run them um, have more grid tie than you need so um, it's like a thousand waters I think like a 900 watt grid tie instead of, it's not really a thousand watt grid tie it's a 900 watt grid tie and I like to stack mine so that um, instead of all power going into just one it's able to spread the load across multiple ones multiple grid ties and then that way even if one grid tie should happen to decide to burn up for or stop working because who knows yeah it might happen you still got two more and I'm, I, I'm gonna add another one so <laughs> anyway I want to make sure I have uh, all bases covered because you know these these are um, the inexpensive way to go for a grid tie setup and uh, it's always better to be uh, um, have more than you need more than you'll ever use it's like I know they say 600 watts each and I have a maximum of 1800 watts just using my sun grid ties for my um, uh, wind turbines but I want to add more just to be safer uh, because it's better it's better to be safer and the same thing goes with your solar and these these are just made for solar not for wind but because I'm running this uh, battery isolator all my wind power comes into the center terminal and this one goes up to the grid ties through a 30 amp fuse or a breaker and it, then it goes to the grid ties and then this lead goes down to the batteries and the batteries act like my uh, voltage regulator they won't let my incoming volts go over about 14 uh, amp. and if they do then the dump load kicks on <laughs> so it just using a battery isolator on your system um, you don't get as much power out of your grid ties doing it this way but I don't have to worry about it when I'm at work because if the power goes out and the grid ties turn off um, the power just goes into my battery bank and then I have the dump load to keep my batteries from overcharging so there's always a load on my turbines running the system this way um, and then it, solar panels it doesn't matter it's like you could just the, the grid goes out and I'm not home the grid ties turn off and the solar panels just sit there not you, you don't have to worry about solar panels they just sit there 
and not do nothing. But if the wind's blowing and the power goes out um, and you don't have it hooked to a battery bank or a dump load, then those turbines will just keep spinning faster and faster and faster because there's no load on them and there could be some damage to your turbines. So anyway, I hope I covered everything. When you get these, shake them. Make sure there's nothing loose inside of them. Um, the fan blows out the top on the DC input side. The fan blows out. Um, you can hook it up the other way around, but you just got to get in there and take the, the nut the bolts off of the fan, flip the fan around and put it back on and put the bolts back in and then the fan will blow in and that's what I'm going to do for those guys up there even though the fan never kicks on on those guys because <laughs> the uh, they're made for solar and they're made for more consistent power uh, so if the power is fluctuating the fan thing or the little CPU that's inside of these things thinks that oh well the sun's going down now we don't need to kick on the fan and then the power or the wind kicks up again and it's like oh maybe we need to kick on the fan but then the wind dries and then so it's like oh we're not going to kick on the fan so anyway um, I know this video has been long and kind of wordy but I hope it helped with some of your questions and helped you understand a little more about the uh, sun grid ties Alright, um, thanks for watching you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>